All right, about me real quick. I think I showed you here. Um, so I grew up in Cobb County, so public school system uh, child here. Went to Georgia Tech and studied industrial engineering. After that, about, I think my second senior year, I, I fell into computers and programming, but uh, my dad was saying, all right, let's, let's get off the payroll and move, move out. Um, so I, uh, but I stuck with the programming. So I, I did an internship at Racetrack Petroleum in Smyrna. Uh, I got a job from there at Sprint. I used the old logo. I don't know if anybody recognizes that one. Um, and did some interesting things with Windows development. And really, really kind of liked it, but I was never the best programmer. I was good at what I did because I liked designing things and, and, and creating a system that was gonna help somebody, but I didn't like spending all those hours in the code, right? It just wasn't, wasn't my, my thing. But I, again, I was kind of stuck around technology, and this time, I, uh, about 97, I moved to Arthur Anderson. Anybody heard of that company? Um, I was there for five years, and I was there, heads down, doing my thing, and, and one day they started talking about this thing called Enron. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I never heard of Enron, and honestly, I hadn't. I didn't know it was one of our largest clients. Mm -hmm. um, because I wasn't on the consulting side. But anyway, long story short, uh, five people from that one team brought the whole company down. Um, fast forward, I ended up at Home Depot. I had to roll my sleeves up. and Because uh, at Anderson, I was into management a little bit. Really got away from the code. But to get a job, kind of get back in the market, I went to Home Depot um, and had to relearn some things. And, and connect it to whatever environment. And it'll serve up the mobile web applications inside that native shell. Now what we've got is, um, we've got some demo examples, which is what Charlie's pulling up, and you can do things like talk to the camera, you can talk to the GPS. By default, it's gonna have our brand on it, and that's not because we, we, we're just trying to make it easy, but you don't have to do that. It's open source, you can um, actually take this code, we'll give it to you, and you can put your own logo on it, and, but the downside there is you have to go through your own published process with the source, okay? Reporting an accident. Now, this is actually really uh, a lot. If I say I was in an accident, I can say yes. And how many people were in the car, too? This is great for lawyers, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, but look, I can take pictures of the accidents, and when I click on one of the cameras, it says, would you like to access the camera? Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. So let's take a picture of what's on the accident, and it just went away. <laughs> I was trying to take a picture of you. Uh, so but, what that is is um, it's just a display. I mean, the app is fine. But um, essentially, that's an example. That's a sample app. So if you go to Out Systems Now or if you download Out Systems Now and say try a demo, there's a couple in there. The car insurance app. But just to tell you where it was going, you can pick a couple areas around the car, take a picture using the real camera, not looking up a picture you've already taken, but a real time picture. The next screen says where did this uh, application or action occur. Yep. Shows your location, you can move it, and then you can report your accident. And you so can just send that to your insurance company. Isn't that cool? Isn't that great? Yeah. Now, there are a lot of students out there who feel that they can't do this because they're not into algebra, they're not into math. Did you see a way just now how students can really benefit from building an app? It, you do get the code, the coding with it, but a lot of those steps have been taken away to really bring the interest from these young people because a lot of people do not want to sit there and write a string of code. They do not want to learn, and they do not want to fix bugs, but this is a great way for them to learn how to do that. You have Toby's out system, you have my uh, card. I know that our time is up. We try to stay on schedule here, but if you have any questions whatsoever, you know, please come up and ask us those questions. Or are there any questions that anybody would like to have before we close out?
I do a little service work on the side with uh, an organization in Cape Georgia called Global Village Project. And what Global Village does is they actually train um, young girls who are refugees in the country from places as far as Burma to Sudan and other places in the world where young women are being persecuted and killed. So I teach them technology. I started off teaching them how to develop mobile apps, but well, we had to go back to learn the keyboard. So that was okay. It worked out very well. So today, one of the things I want everybody to understand is that no, we're not gonna be doing any coding, but we're gonna show you how you can code and how you can develop a mobile app without knowing Java, Ruby, PHP, jQuery. You're familiar with those terms, aren't you? Objective-C, Xcode, now Swift, and all those great things. So if somebody said that to you, that you can build an app like that, would you be skeptical? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're skeptical? Yeah, I'm gonna see you build an app without coding. <laughs> coding is one of the coolest things in the world. And it started way back with, <laughs> I'm telling my age if I say this word, Cobalt, <laughs> Fortran, okay. You can't guess my age, though, can you? <laughs> I studied COBOL and during the summer in school, and I flunked out. Because <laughs> it was summer, it was school, and it was COBOL. But I did pass it after the fall quarter. I went to, I'm not gonna say what school it was. But anyway, let's get started. So, there are a lot of platforms out here that teach us that we can code without actually using coding or develop an app without actually using coding. And if you notice that, mobile apps have taken the world by storm, haven't they? Um, I was just playing Angry Birds the other night. <laughs> I love Angry Birds, I mean, <laughs> I'm hooked. But did you know that the Kim Kardashian app is, is, is scheduled to make almost two million dollars in its first year? Is it two million? 20 million. 200. 200 million, I was wrong, 200 million. Now, her app is making $700,000 a day. That's $29,166 an hour, $486 a minute, and $8.10 a second. That's, that's, go ahead, Kim. I can't do math that too. <laughs> People like you spend this kind of money, and they say there's a problem with the economy. People have been known to spend $120, $500 in in-app purchases. That's when they get us, download the app free, but you gotta do this, this, and this if you wanna get some more. Okay, there are several types of mobile technology. Let's talk about what the mobile app can be. You can have mobile, native, or hybrid. How many people have heard of the word hybrid? And what it means? Do you know what type of it is? Uh, it's in between, it's two different, it's two, you can use hybrid this or hybrid that. Uh-huh, yeah. Okay, anybody else familiar with hybrid? Hybrid is a secret code now. It's like, it's like secret man. <laughs> oh, no, I shouldn't think of the term, but I do like, secret agent man. That's good, one. yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Where is cool, but you can't get it in the app store, right? You can't download it in the app store. Native, iOS, Droid, Windows, and Blackbeard have taken over. Well, maybe not Windows and Blackberry. But for the hybrid, the hybrid uses the native functionalities, the GPS, the camera, and the push notification. But what's so cool about it, the website of it runs inside of a shell. So that was very smart that they did that. So that, I guess that comes up with the word, oh, Jesus Christ, hybrid. What does hybrid mean when you think about it and how they're using it? Native is still running on the device, but it's actually running the website version inside of the native version. Very cool, huh? Somebody, that smart person. So you have Apple, Droid, and Windows. And I just literally just put up some actual things about the Apple Xcode and the Android Eclipse-based development. Android, uh, one of the things that, that I've learned here with Xcoding is that Objective-C, a lot of people aren't hiring for it, probably because Apple is such the majority. But don't believe that. People are really hiring. They're saying Objective-C is now Swift. Are you, is everybody familiar with that? You know, when it went to iOS 8, Objective-C is not going away because if you think about it, everything that has been built up to now is Objective-C. So it's still gonna to need to be supported and maintained. So people are saying 
Do I need to learn objective C? Yeah, you need to understand it. How much you want to build on it now, it all determines, it depends. But with Swift, I don't like all that pop. Can you hear me? If I don't use the mic? Yeah, you yes. can hear me? Okay. Pop on. <laughs> 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 Blue, blue. Oh, <laughs> like But with the high, with the wonderful uh, Swift, Swift, one of the things that I love about Swift is not, you don't have to use, you don't have to end your sentence when it's semicolon. So there's a lot of the string that you don't have to write in order for it to work. And it's more friendly with the bugs. You don't have to stop all the bugs out when you're trying to. That's what I tell my kids. You should have seen me when I told them they had to stop out the bugs. Like, really, Miss Charlie? But Android is a, is a base, is, is a, Android and Clip is a great way to learn. To, and it's very simple and very easy to learn Android. A lot of people are saying that they don't, uh, they're looking for, a lot of people look for Android developers because this is the big guy. And this is the big guy because they offer a simulation tool. They offer you everything to build the app. So why not learn Objective-C, right? If they're the big guys out here, they want you to develop their apps with their platforms, so they're gonna provide you with everything <coughs> that you need to develop for their platform. Jordan's fun, and I, if you come to me or email me or text me or whatever later on, I give you my contact information, I tell you some ways to do that. That Windows Phone SDK, it provides an excellent experience. Now, Windows is really just picking up because these two are dominating. They're monopolizing everything, right? But you know, Nokia, I think that's the phone that Windows is using a lot of, they're really picking up and the experience is great, especially for people who are just beginning to develop mobile technology. Now, a few platforms, white labels. You've probably seen up some of them. You can build your app for free. You don't need to know coding. You don't need to learn how to do all of this. You can just go on and build your app and it won't cost you anything. You ever heard the term, you get what you pay for? Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what you get, what you pay for. So if you don't, if this is free, guess what? It's free. Is Apple gonna really like it? Apple is very strict about the cuts on their platform. If you check out my website, we have a few apps. One of the biggest things about app development that I like to teach my girls and some of the other people that I teach, I'm also doing an adjunct professor uh, mobile app development course at Emory. We just got signed on with them and we're starting that in February with an organization called the Consort Institute. The Consort Institute is working with people with workforce development. We have people who are underemployed and people who are unemployed. So we're trying to put people to work. So we're focused on women, minorities, and uh, foreigners with our program. And at the Consort, not only are we teaching people technology with healthcare IT, I'm also on the board of TAG with TAG Healthcare IT on the Board of Advisors, not only are we teaching people healthcare IT, but we're also trying to place them into jobs. So when it comes down to, uh, what was I saying? I was talking about, I was talking about all that. The different platforms, so what you get is free. I build app, provides a strong user experience for both beginners and experienced programs is essential for long-term health of a mobile platform ecosystem. Does that tell you anything at all about building an app? App Sin allows users to reinvent the traditional way of creating and distributing mobile applications. This white label app builder creates and distributes your applications over multiple mobile platforms. Wow, sounds like that's something you wanna do, but how much does it cost? And then business apps, you see this everywhere. You go on, you go on any line, if you have searched the word app in Google, Google is cool. You know who owns YouTube now? Google. So how about video marketing? How about getting some video marketing to get your website up on Google? If you have video and it's in YouTube, guess where your website's gonna go when people search for you? Very smart. Google is the bomb. Google is too much in my business. You ever heard the term Big Brother's watching? I am telling my age on that. Before Big Brother really started watching, Big Brother is watching. Okay, so every time you go on Google, whatever you do, watch it show up on something that you look for, they're gonna show you on the side and add. Ah, oh, don't you just love it? But business apps have really have a great platform. They, you can build some beautiful apps, iOS and Android, and a mobile website. And you don't need to know any programming to do it. It's more of a drag and drop now. But today we're gonna show you a platform called OutSystems. OutSystems, I'm gonna show you a little video about OutSystems. Oh, oh, no, oh, I already got it on here. It needs to play from here, it's already buffered. I am so silly. I'm really not on it, like all of that. Okay, where is it? Did 
I lose my uh, connection? But um, we're going to talk to you about OutSystems, and, and uh, Toby's going to come up and he's going to talk with me about OutSystems. I've already buffered this, so I'm hoping it comes up so you can see a little bit more about OutSystems. And later on, if you all have any questions, Toby and I will be up here to answer some questions for you. But we are going to build a map, but we're going to start with this video here that tells you a little bit more about OutSystems. 